fast, but you have to remember, good food will take a long time to cook. No instant. So like an artist, if you want a, a beautiful artwork in just photocopy, but if you want a real one, you have to have, well, it takes a long time. Market research, this is for the social science. You have to think also, what people like is not what they need. So sometimes you say, oh, they want aromatic rice. Everyone will say, I like aromatic rice. But once the farmers were planted, they will not like it because all the rice will go there. And if you eat aromatic rice for, the, for two weeks, you will have gas problem, stomach problem. So you have to be uh, a very, it's like your child, you ask them what they want, but actually it's not what they need. So you have, you have to balance this one. Seed, seed systems is very important, which we have now no capability now at, at Erie because we are not doing uh, seed systems, but we should support this one. And the private sector is playing a big role in this one. That's why I love this new project that we have with the DA on the developing or the development and dissemination of the next generation rice varieties for the major ecosystem in the Philippines, where we are helping the regional field office and the regional field office of the DA in all over the Philippines to develop, to identify the best varieties at the same time and multiply the seeds. Double curse in saline prone areas because they are problem with stress and they have also problem with seeds. Because as I told them, if you plant, if you if you harvest the rice grain from the field <coughs> under stress, they become susceptible. Because it's the embryo are not well formed, they have uh, nutrients are less, they are abnormal. It's like an stressed pregnant woman. So you have to get another seed. So you have to get a seed from the normal field. So they should have a fresh seed. Not they could not recycle the seed. My next dreams for the next 10 to 20 years that we will have the healthiest rice. Not healthier rice. It should be healthier and nutritious. That's why we call it healthiest rice. And the next one is diet rice. High fiber, low glycemic index. You could sell it 500 pesos per kilo. I will buy it. And many will buy it. Okay? That's diet rice. High fiber, we have some rice with high fiber. Just don't remove the heart, it's already high fiber. <laughs> the next is the low carbon footprint price. Next is my dream of the shorter breeding cycle. My dream is really the, to, to, to make the double upgrade really efficient. The private companies, the base levels, they are all going double upgrade. No one is doing any crossing or paying green. Double upgrade, select. So you will attract a lot of breeders now because they don't need to go to the field that much. <laughs> Genomic editing is also exciting, I dream of it, but as of now, breeders will look at genetic editing. It's like if you are familiar with Word, Microsoft Word, genomic editing is like spell check. So we want it more applicable. Hybrid the grain is this way. I don't want to dream about this one, but this is happening. Hybrids will rain even for rice. Because if you see the development of, I observed from the Philippines only, from 2011, 2013, 14, hybrid release varieties have increased. Very few inbreds are being released, only from the rain bed and top bed. So in the next 10 to 10 years, hybrids will rain. So here we should invest more in this one, developing inbreds, or uh, A-lines, B-lines, R-lines, or the uh, double cross, single cross, to, to bad family. And breeders are now very rare, so the dream of rice breeding academy should be there. Train more breeders, not only geneticists, but breeders. And with, with that transformation, we have the guided breed. Our dream should be guided. Artists should be guided. Because if you are an artist that you'll just be impulsive, then you will be a starving artist. So you have to produce something to feed you, to develop more variety at the same time, you will still do your art. Okay, with the brilliant transformation, you will still do some a lot of art work there. My greatest achievement is the people. My staff, 
the scholars to be accurate. I have 18 species already finished, 24 MS, 20 BS species, postdocs, six interns a lot on the job training a lot, and I have 10. I have four PhDs now and six MS. I hope I can finish them before end of May. <laughs> that's the big challenge, that's the big dream. So I want to introduce to you, this is my staff when I was in Africa, and now this is my research assistant, now he's an IRS in Africa by Center. This guy is my driver, I asked him to go to school, now he's a, a, a sales supervisor, he's kind of a product. This lady went to the U.S. She's now PhD in Washington State University, and Sinclair is now in, uh, in Africa Rice Center for people with PhD. And Dante Andorada is now in has finished his PhD and now working as a plant pathologist in wheat cereal. Uh, cereal wheat. Marion is here. She's still with us. <laughs> and this is my team before. You can see here. Uh, Rafik is now the scientist. Uh, Dr. Rosa Islam is the, I think, division head now of uh, Bina. Glo is taking care of her granddaughters. <laughs> and these two are now medical doctors. Ellen is now, Dr. Ellen Tumibang is now in UC Davis. And the secretary, uh, Lori, is still at Giri. And Dante is here. Atik is now a uh, professor in Malaysia. And Brunex is still here. And all the doctors. So this is my so called tall breeding and magic team. Actually, don't be deceived. This is we just take picture of the uh, uh, the nice, not nice part of the world. <laughs> Over there is a beautiful beach. So this is in the world. And this is the Salinas Emergence Tolerance Team with a bell. This is how we work together. That work we made together. And this is lately we have the Inger and Met team. They are very well behaved. They are my most spoiled uh, adopted children. <laughs> so they are worried where they are going to. <laughs> and this is the cross cutting breeding support team in Hawaii. <laughs> <laughs> and this is the Erie breeding family. Not Erie breeding family, it's the Erie family. And where I'm going? So I'm going from Erie is going from C3 to C4, so I'm going to from cell pollinated to cross pollinated, from C3 to C4, from inbred to hybrid, and my rice is corn. <laughs> because in, in Mindanao they call it my rice is corn. Because um, we have a joke there where usually we eat our corn uh, as rice. Then we, are, we usually cover our rice when one other came and say, why are you covering your rice? I want your food. You say, oh, I'm ashamed because my rice is corn. <laughs> See, it's a shame because what is eating is, is corn. So I'll be moving to, to corn, and I'll be, I'll be still be working with uh, rice-based uh, farming systems. And this is my family before I left for Africa. Before I left, I came back with six. And they are also my transplanters in Africa. And when they come back, they are still they are still planting our rice. And this is dream accomplished. Is sweet to the soul. God be the glory. Bless. God bless me. Thank you very much. Uh, excellent presentation and uh, a lot of them. So we hope it come true. Now a uh, floor open to uh, our audience for your questions or your challenges or your dreams. So who go on first? Bob? <laughs> well, thanks, Glenn. That was uh, stimulating, exciting, uh, and challenging. Uh, now, I don't want to into a deep penetrating question, but I did notice that you said that life was better before OCS <laughs> and that people don't necessarily uh, like what they need. Uh, so, is there a lesson there? <laughs> 